Hey there, in this video, we are going to look at solving by quadratic formula. So this is our fourth and final method in um, the solving by quadratics unit. So we've looked at solving um, by factoring with grouping. We've done factoring by guess and check to solve, um, which also has underneath guess and check the um, difference of perfect squares method. And then we talked about our third option was um, solve by square root method. And then now we are going to look at solving by quadratic formula. So any quadratic equation that can be written in standard form, which is that ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, any of those can be um, used with quadratic formula to solve, okay? And solving with quadratic formula will find us the roots or the solutions for x. So they will tell us just like we've done with solving by factoring and solving by square root method where we ended up with x equals this and this. Same thing for quadratic formula. All right. Now the quadratic formula may seem intense and overwhelming when you look at it. Um, this is the quadratic formula right here. But the key thing is there are three variables that you're going to need um, or three not really variables, coefficients, constants, but we use variables as placeholders to start. So A, B, and C are those letters that we're going to need to fill in in the quadratic formula, okay? So there is a little song, um, and I am by no means um, a singer, but I will hum it for you or sing it along for you, talk it through for you. Um, if you know the Pop Goes the Weasel song, it kind of goes to that theme. So X equals opposite B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2a so that's one way to remember if you can think through um, that little song i will often still sing that in my head as i write it out and that can help you to memorize the quadratic formula okay but the key things like i said that you'll need to know are a b and c um, once you do it once or twice you'll see that it's actually not as bad as it may look so looking at number one we have 2x squared minus 8x minus 24. First thing, and it equals zero. First thing that you always have to do is get zero on one side if it's not already done for you. Once you've got zero on one side, then we go ahead and write out A, B, and C and what those are equal to. So our A is our number in front of X squared, which will be two. B is the number in front of X, which will be negative eight. Notice I do include the sign with it. And then C is the constant at the end, again, including the sign, so negative 24. So writing, our quadratic formula, x equals opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And notice I say all over 2a. Everything is over 2a, not just the square root part. So let's plug in those different pieces. So we're going to plug into b, a, c, and then a and b go in twice, but we'll get there in a second. So negative B is going to be negative negative 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 squared. Notice the negative 8 is in parentheses. You have to have it in parentheses when you square it. Otherwise, you will not square the negative and you will get the wrong answer. Minus 4 times A, which is 2, times C, which is negative 24. And then all of that is over two times two. So again, I just plugged in my B, B, A, C, and A. Once I've done that, your first step is to simplify what we call the discriminant, which is the part underneath the square root. So we're going to go ahead and simplify that. You can also at the same time simplify the part underneath. We just don't want to do any dividing or anything top to bottom yet, um, but just simplify those separately. Now, in this specific case, we have a double negative here. So one additional thing you can do is change this negative negative 8 into a positive 8. Plus or minus, we're going to leave the square root symbol. Negative 8 squared is 64. Positive 64, notice, not negative. And then we have negative 4 times 2 times negative 24. A couple ways you can think through that. I start with negative 4 times 2, which is going to be negative 8. So really, in this portion right here, we're doing negative 8 times negative 24. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, a negative times a negative is going to become a positive. So this will be plus. And then if we do 8 times 24, 
If you don't know it in your head, you can set it up as 8 times 24 like this. 8 times 4 is 32, carry the 3. 8 times 2 is 16, 17, 18, 19 when you add 3. So that's 192. So we get plus 192. All over 2 times 2 is 4. So at that point, what I want to go ahead and do is simplify again the part underneath the square root. So that's going to be the 64 plus 192. And if you need to line it up and add them together, you can. But you end up with 8 plus or minus the square root of 256 over 4. Once you get down to this point where you have um, the square root simplified, the part under the square root simplified, we need to look at the square root as a whole. So the square root of 256, 256 is a perfect square. The square root of 256 is 16. So we rewrite this as 8 plus or minus the whole number 16 all over 4. Now you can simplify right now because all of these are divisible by 4, or you can just jump straight into getting your two answers. It's up to you. It will be very similar to how we do um, the square root method, where we get two answers that way. So one of those is going to come from 8 plus 16 over 4, and the other one will come from 8 minus 16 over 4. So 8 plus 16 over 4 will be 24 over 4, which comes out to be x equals 6 as one of our solutions. The other one, 8 minus 16, will be negative 8 divided by 4. Negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2 as our second solution. So x equals 6 and x equals negative 2 will be your two answers on that one. Now, number 2, we've seen this problem in almost every video that we've gone through, every method we've gone through. Um, I'm showing you again that you can do it with quadratic formula as well. So this is one of those versatile um, equations that we can actually use multiple methods on. So even though there are only two terms, we can think of this as tri a trinomial with x squared plus 0x minus 16 equals 0, which means we can find a, b, and c. And technically, you don't even have to rewrite it to see that, but a is going to be the 1 in front of the x squared. C is going to be the negative 16. That's the constant. B is not actually there, so it is a 0. So 0 is our B value on that one. So when we go to plug in to opposite B, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A, we're still going to do it exactly how we did on the last one, but you'll notice when you plug in for B, it's a 0. And so it looks a little funky to start. So when we go ahead and set it up, we have negative 0. Negative 0 is just going to be 0. So I'm just going to write 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 16 all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 1. So now I simplify just like we did in the last one. So we're going to start by um, simplifying the discriminant, which is the part under the square root. So that's going to be 0 plus or minus the square root of 0 for 0 squared. And then negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. So we have negative 4 times negative 16. A negative times a negative is going to become positive. And if you know that multiplication, you get 64. If you don't, you can write out 16 times 4, go through the process and get 64. So this will be 0 plus 64 under the root, all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Next thing that you want to do, add the 0 and the 64 together, and you get 64 under the root. Additionally, because you have a 0 before the plus or minus, you don't actually need that there. So we can actually just put plus or minus the square root of 64 over 2. And when we do that, the square root of 64 is 8. So we have plus or minus 8 over 2. Okay. And then we have two options here. We can do 8 divided by 2 right now and get 4 and have plus or minus 4. Or um, we can technically do it the exact same way we've been doing it. If you don't want to memorize when can I simplify, when can I not. And you can do 8 divided by 2 and negative 8 divided by 2. And that's going to give you 4 and negative 4.
So our two answers for this one will be x equals negative 4 and x equals 4, which has been what we've gotten every time we've solved this problem, whether it's by factoring or square root method or quadratic formula. So in summary, the quadratic formula is this formula right here. Remember that you need to find um, your equation with 0 on one side, and then we use ax squared plus bx plus c to figure out our a, b, and c. Plug those values in to their respective locations, and then we simplify and get our answers that way. So remember with quadratic formula, as long as it can be written in that standard form and set equal to zero, we can use the quadratic formula to solve.